Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm James Sweetapple, uh, speaking from Orange, New South Wales, Australia. Uh, Orange is located uh, about three and a half hours west of Sydney, uh, which is one of our biggest capital cities. So I have been uh, here at uh, Cargo Road Wines now for 24 years. I grew up in Sydney, and when I finished school, I got involved in agriculture, sheep and cattle and farming, and then uh, 30 years ago, I got involved in viticulture. And uh, through a lot of hard work and good saving of uh, my pesos, I was able to uh, purchase an existing vineyard that the previous owner uh, had started in 1983. So I took over in 97. There was three and a half hectares uh, of vineyard on the 45 hectares of land, and I have now taken that up to 16 hectares, uh, which has been uh, very good, very rewarding, a lot of hard work, um, and I have uh, moved on from there. So why did I decide to embrace regenerative agriculture? Uh I embraced regenerative agriculture and holistic management in about 2011, as I have always been running my property sustainably, uh, using sheep to uh, cut the grass in winter. I have been protecting trees in regrowth areas. I've had to conserve water and, and many other things. However, I realized that the word sustainable uh, was being greenwashed. Uh, on many products that I just did not believe were being produced sustainably. So I dug deep, I researched and, and listened to friends and so on, and was introduced to holistic management and realized that this was a much more sustainable approach uh, to which uh, was all about monitoring, observing and monitoring, and a new form of decision making. And setting of a holistic context to work towards uh, my holistic goal or context and continue to monitor. Uh, and then later on in, in recent years, uh, EOVs, Environmental Outcome Validation Certificates, have, have come into play, and that is fantastic. I am the first vineyard in the world to have achieved EOV certification. Uh, wow, exciting. Uh, and in our country, we have uh, organic certification. And again, too many people are going down the track of being organically certified, but they could be standing in a desert that is degrading uh, where I am looking at regenerating. And, and saying that I am uh, organic and I have not used chemicals, you can still be ruining the land. And to me, that is not correct. So I went down the true holistic, uh, environmentally outcome certified uh, pathway, and I'm very happy with the results. What were the major changes I had to undertake in the vineyard? The most exciting and helpful change was being introduced to holistic management and holistic timed managed grazing with a much greater focus on regenerating pastures through understanding the mineral cycle and the solar cycle and the water cycle and monitoring pastures and having a plan uh, for my grazing and assuming and a whole plan for my business and assuming that that was wrong and monitoring and readjusting and using human ingenuity uh, to make decisions and work out how we can do it best. And one of the major changes once I got into holistic management was uh, being introduced to KiwiTech electric fencing. And I encourage you to Google KiwiTech and uh, watch some of their YouTubes and go to their website. And it is the most fantastic, well thought out, uh, portable electric fence system I've ever come across. And that has been an absolute game changer. Um, in my old days, I would roll out 800 metres of ring lock, which is a uh, horizontal and vertical pre-made fence uh, out of wire. Uh, 200 metres must be 100 kilos. And I would roll out 800 metres of it. And when you purchase uh, a roll of ring lock, maybe it's 
50 centimetres in diameter, but the first time you roll it out, it's huge uh, when you roll it back up. So it was very difficult. So I would roll out 800 metres and fence off seven hectares and put my 200, 300 sheep in that area uh, for three or four months. It was seven hectares of vineyard, about 120 rows, about 150 metres long, and I'd leave them in there for three months. And guess what? They would overgraze. They'd go backwards and forwards. They would make tracks. They would camp in, in certain areas uh, and overgraze it, and all the manure would be left in one spot. Um, so now with the onset of the KiwiTech electric fence gear, I can put them in small areas like maybe you'll see on my videos uh, and do timed managed grazing and a much, much better result. Um, so very happy with how I've done that and I'm able to get better grazing um, and, and that has just helped things. Some of the other changes I've done, um, I've never used a pesticide in the vineyard, the previous owner never used a pesticide. So for 38 years, there haven't been pesticides on my land. So very happy about that. Nine years ago, I stopped using um, glyphosate. Every year, I would do one and one only glyphosate underneath my grapevines to give me a um, uh, a bare bare earth or reduce uh, the amount of organic matter growing up under my vines. Nine years ago, I stopped doing that and with timed managed grazing, most of the time, not all of the time, I can graze that hard enough, get that short enough before spring comes, bud burst, where my grape vines start shooting and growing. Um, and I must have the sheep out during that period. I have uh, been able to graze well enough that I've been able to significantly reduce uh, the undervine growth and um, keep that at bay. So that's that's been brilliant. Um, I have implemented the use of compost teas. Um, I have collected my own uh, native grasses and uh, soaked them and made my own teas. I've bought uh, certified compost and, and used teas. Um, and I'm trying to increase the protozoa in the soil and the fungi, and I've had years where I've dug the shovel in and broken uh, up the earth and seen fantastic white uh, filaments of fungi growing. Um, very, very happy with that result. Um, so that's been some of, some of what I've been doing. Um, I haven't used inorganic fertilisers since the establishment of the vineyards. Um, soils in Australia are typically very low in available phosphorus. So the typical practice was to deep rip uh, phosphorus, superphosphate, um, into the soil uh, underneath the grapevines uh, before planting. And um, then it's very slow moving, so it allows the roots of the grapevine to uh, get down and eventually receive some of that phosphorus. Uh, since establishing the vineyards, I have no longer used superphosphate uh, or any other inorganic fertilisers. I'm using a soft rock phosphorus uh, that is loaded with bacteria that helps release the natural phosphorus that is tied up in Australian soils. So that has been um, very pleasing. I've also, in the early years, applied a lot of lime and I've taken my pH from when I started here 24 years ago uh, from a pH of 3.45 to now a pH of 7. Yes, <laughs> a lot of work uh, spreading a lot of lime and incorporating that and using cover crops and the sheep to help cycle the minerals. I've also changed my organic matter from when I started here my organic matter in the soil was 0.83%. Now it is ranges from 4.4% to 10.3%. And that is absolutely amazing for my district. And bearing in mind that here in Australia, uh, we have just been through four years of drought. So to have my... Um, 
organic matter increasing and, and being stable is sensational. Uh, our national newspapers wrote up the 2020 drought as the worst in 100 years, record-breaking. So to maintain my organic matter uh, proves to me that I am, I am doing the right thing with the soil. I've also used a yeoman's plough, um, which is an Australian invention that gets in and shatters the soil. Uh, you do it when it's dry and it shatters and it leaves very little disturbance on the surface. So hopefully not losing too much carbon and, and my results show that it's not losing carbon. I'm still building carbon. So I used that since 2010. Um, I've used that in every second row for a two-year period, uh, getting down, cracking out. Um, we've got volcanic tuff, which is the ash from the volcano that uh, uh, was active here nine million years ago. Um, so we're cracking that apart. I've got seed shaker boxes on the yeoman's plough that are dribbling seeds in, and we use um, crimson clover, strawberry clover, and uh, loosen, and then I've used some oats, and that dribbles that down into the rip marks and uh, helps propagate that, which is which is fantastic for the soil. So I'm getting legumes in. I'm uh, fixing nitrogen onto the nodules of the roots. Um, so I haven't done um, any yeoman's plough for a while. One of the negative effects of doing the yeoman's plough was it certainly affects the roots. It prunes the roots of the grapevines off. And when we did this four or five years ago, we didn't know we were coming into a four-year drought. So we'd pruned roots off and the roots had to regrow, but we didn't have a lot of moisture and so on. So that was a negative effect and um, the value of hindsight. Um, since then, we have also sown multi-species cover crops on top uh, and I have, um, through learnings from Gabe Brown, the author, author <laughs> of Dirt to Soil, I did a 13 species cover crop and we were growing 180 tonnes of dry matter per hectare. Wow. Um, and I've gone through and I've, I've thrown out one metre quadrants and I have cut all the grass and the plants and I have had wet uh, measurement weights and then I've dried them and converted that to a dry matter uh, tonnes per hectare and fantastic. Now, I've utilised this with my slasher that uh, has two rotors and it sides th side throws uh, the green material underneath the grapevines and suppresses the weeds and you can imagine fantastic organic matter um, building up its green cut so it composts underneath it suppresses the weed growth tick 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 um, i've also been able to use it for grazing at the right time and then recently last year i bought a crimping roller uh, which is the most exciting toy i now have on the vineyard and we had um, organic matter five foot high it was level with the, the bonnet of the tractor. We had daikon radish that went to seed. We had um, uh, canola. We had, um, uh, what's it called, dock. We had chicory that grows very high. We had um, arrow leaf clover, which climbs and, and binds all these plants together. And I was able to go through with the roller and just flatten it down. And I did that three or four times in each vineyard block. And we had a bed of organic matter that was like a mattress, just sensational. Uh, and that's just through learnings on, on YouTube and listening to other clever people. Um, so it's been fantastic. Uh, what are the benefits uh, and the results I've experienced with this type of viticulture? Well, some of the results are the increase in organic matter in the soil, uh, the bringing up of the pH to neutral. Um, I've certainly increased the water holding capacity uh, in my 16 hectares of vines, um, and we are able to get through the droughts better but when the drought is so severe, no one can survive. Um, 
I only have 2 million litres of storage when my dams are full. So after two and a half years of drought, my dams were empty. Uh, we had tiny little amounts of rain. So at least my soil water holding capacity was good. Uh, as we know, uh, 1% of organic matter can hold 175,000 litres of water per hectare. But we must remember you need rain to come into your soil to be able to hold it. So th things have been very tough. So that was one great thing. Um, I do believe I'm growing better quality grapes. Uh, I have better skin uh, thickness and density. Um because I have a better balance in my soil, I have better yields, I have lower inputs. Now, what does that mean? Lower inputs is saving me money. I am not constantly putting out fertilisers, putting out sprays, uh, tilling the soil, um, fiddling. I am, I am sitting back and I am looking and I am thinking. I am using my sheep to cycle minerals, uh, I don't know when I next plan um, to use the yeoman's plough because my soil is very good now. I'm very happy with it. So I've reduced my inputs. Um, I don't listen to the fertiliser companies saying I've taken this many tonnes of grapes off, I need to put this many tonnes of N, P and K on. Uh, I say no. I'm cycling my own minerals. They find this very hard to believe. <laughs> um, so my mid rows are sensational. Uh, my paddocks are the same. My carrying capacity has increased 11 and a quarter percent in seven years. Yeah, not very much, but we had four years of bad drought and I have still been able to increase 11 and a quarter percent. So really very happy with that. Uh, on my property, I can see no erosion. I have no erosion. Uh, I have watched the regeneration of trees in their native location. Um, some of these trees are now 15 metres high and uh, 50 centimetres thick. So very happy with that. I have seen the reduction of what I call true problem weeds. Um, St John's wort, uh, which creates phototoxicity in livestock, uh, St. Barnabas thistle, which has nasty spikes and is no good uh, for the sheep, nothing can graze it, and Patterson's curse. Uh, I have reduced these through timed managed grazing. I now no longer use herbicides to control them. Some of these do have benefits. They have a lovely tap root that goes down and cracks the soil and sequests carbon, but uh, with my clever Kiwi Tech fencing, I can do timed managed grazing on the specific areas where these weeds uh, do uh, live, and I've significantly reduced them so much so that I don't bother with herbicides. I graze them hard at the right time, and I make life very difficult for them, and they don't seem to be spreading. The main differences that I've encountered, I look, I believe having grown up in Sydney and moved to the bush, uh, and firstly being involved in agriculture, then viticulture, I've needed to have an open mind. I've needed to look at everything in a new light. I haven't had to do uh, what my parents have told me and my grandparents have told me, um, this is the way you should do it. I have not been clipped over the back of the head by my grandpapa. I have had to look at this in a new light. I've had to learn this myself. I've had to listen to employers and mentors. Um, so there haven't been any real difficulties. Um, I've had a good mind. I've looked at, at things differently. I have taken on many educations. Um, so I think if, if you want to find the difficulties, the difficulties I have had have been climate change. I have seen the hottest day on record. Uh, many years ago, we hit 41 degrees at 11 o'clock in the morning. Ooh la la. That burnt the grapevines. It burnt the grapes. I have seen the coldest day on record. I have seen the coldest winter. I have seen the wettest winter. I have seen the driest winter. I have seen the hottest winter. I have seen climate change in 
a 20-year period. It is remarkable. It is scary. And this is why I can so passionately approach uh, regenerative agriculture. I need to make things better in my piece of land, in my district, um, as fast as I can for myself, my children, my community. We have got to make change. Um, one of the difficulties is, is lack of time in the day-to-day -to, -day, uh, to do everything I would like to do, to read, to listen, to watch um, YouTubes and education. Uh, lack of time in my life. I wish I had started this 40 years ago, not just 24 years ago. I wish I had been introduced to Alan Savory uh, when I finished school, not uh, 10 or 12 years ago. I wish I had 50 more years of my life where I could be actively working and making significant change and improving on this. I wish I had more time. Um, now, in my early years, we had a significant lack of money. Um, I was rapidly going from three and a half hectares of vineyard to 16 hectares. Um, the vineyard was, uh, look, it was profitable. We made money, but I never saw any of it. I did not pay myself a wage. I reinvested the money into building more vineyard, which is expensive. Uh, we have a high labor cost here. We have a high material cost. Um, eventually, we need a new tractor. We need a new fungicide sprayer. We needed a forklift. In the winery, you, we used to move the barrels empty by hand and, and roll them up a ladder and build stillages. Now we have a forklift. Um, so every dollar we made went back into the vineyard. Uh, things have changed now, but it took 24 years to get real cash in the bank that we can sit and look at the cash in the bank rather than uh, keep borrowing. Um, what advice would I give you? Right, please start now. Please don't hesitate. Please start now. You will save money. You will save on input costs. You will be helping uh, save your environment, which in turn is going to save our environment, which in turn is going to save your children's environment. Please start now. Uh, with careful management in a short period of time, you are going to gain a better quality of product, whether you are growing grapes, whether you are growing uh, any fruit or vegetables or crops or animals. Uh, if you start now and do good thinking, you will be able to change your land quite quickly uh, and you will, have, uh, you will, be, you will be happier and our future will be happier, and together our planet will be happier. So please start now. Uh, there are many people like myself who have experience and time to help. Uh, you just need to ask us. Um, we are here. I am giving up time today, but I am so happy to do it. I want to help anybody that wants to go down this track and learn, and then I know you will give back. It is part of the um, quadruple bottom line. We have the community, we have uh, the future, we have the environment, and we have the financial, the quadruple bottom line. And when you get involved, you will give back and, and everything works together. Um, so you can also Google this. You can look at TED Talks, you can look at YouTubes, um, Try. You need to cut the uh, cut it down and, and work out who you can really listen to because there's a lot of experts out there that may lead you astray. Um, but the information is there, um, and and you can go and help yourself. So, look, it has been my absolute pleasure to talk to you uh, today. Uh, I wish you all well, and um, very happy uh, to be contacted in the future.